All right, problem four. Free response question problem four from the 2013 AP Calculus practice exam. We have let f be the function given by this equation here. Find these limits as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity for f of x. Okay, so let's look at first approaching positive infinity. So if we got positive infinity thrown into these x's, um, we're going to get a very large number. We're going to get basically infinity minus infinity minus one minus infinity or minus one. Um, well, infinity squared two times infinity e to the infinity. Um, you're basically just going to get infinity times infinity. You're going to get infinity here. Or you can write or does not exist. Either one is correct. You're going to get a very large number that or I guess infinity, we say it describes the behavior of the number. It just grows and grows, grows, you know, infinitely. Now, when it goes to negative infinity, what happens with this e over here, we have e to the negative infinity. You can look at that as like zero because this is like one over e to the infinity. So you have a one over a huge number and this goes to zero. So then it ends up being like zero times, like it doesn't matter if we say infinity or negative infinity, if you got a zero times something, it just becomes zero. They don't really go, well, assuming you've gone through the course already, like their questions like this are very rare because there's a lot to it. It really goes into like real analysis and like you, Nick, you, you know, may, you may not even may not even see L'Hopital's rule sometimes um, in, in the calculus one course anymore. But um, there's a lot to it, so yeah, just just, to, just get familiar with a couple of different examples and just don't stress too much about it. This this is only worth one point. This entire part, one point for yes, both of them. All right, find the intervals where f is increasing. And show the analysis that leads to your answer. So we just have to look at the first derivative and see where it's positive. So let's look for critical points. So f prime will be 2x minus 2 times e to the x plus x squared minus 2x minus 1 times e to the x using the product rule. Remember, derivative of this times this. Keep this the same, times the derivative, times the derivative of e to the x, which stays as e to the x. Now we can probably just combine them and make it more clean. Factor out the e to the x. 2x minus 2 plus x squared minus 2 minus 1. So we get e to the x. These two x's cancel times x squared uh, minus 2 minus 1, so minus 3. So then we set the derivative equal to zero. So we're gonna have zero equal to x squared minus three. And so possible answers can be positive and negative square root of three. Let's put the x over here, plus and minus the square root of three. So then these are our critical points that we wanna check. And we wanna check the intervals is what I mean. So negative infinity and pos or negative square root of three and positive square root of three, we're going to divide our intervals by. And let's check the numbers in these three areas. So let's check zero. Let's check like 10. And let's check negative 10. Remember, we just need to know the sign. We don't need to know the exact value because um, we want to just know, understand if the function's increasing or decreasing. So we plug in negative 10 into... Oh yeah, and plug it into the derivative equation. So plug it into, I guess let's plug it into here because that's the easiest to work with. We plug in negative 10. We'll get e to the negative 10. This is a positive number times negative 10 squared 100 minus three. So we get 97. A positive times a positive. So here we have a positive number. It's gonna be increasing. Next, let's plug in zero. We have e to the zero times zero minus. E to the zero, so e to the zero um, 
put that zero there, we have just negative three. So we have one times negative three, so we have negative three. So in this interval, we have a negative number or negative behavior going down. And now let's plug in 10. You plug in 10, you get e to the 10 times 100 minus three, 97. Positive times a positive, going up in here. So it's increasing on these two intervals, negative infinity to negative square root of three and positive square root of three to positive infinity. It's probably more organized than me, you know, I just want to make it all in kind of in one spot for you guys to follow along easier. And last part, find the intervals on which f, on which the graph of f is concave down. Oh, so we, all we have to do now is look at the second derivative and see what the sign is there um, by focusing first on inflection points. So we take the derivative of the derivatives with the take the derivative of f prime of x. So again, f prime of x is equal to e to the x times x squared minus three. So f double prime will be e to the x times x squared minus three plus e to the x times two x using product rule, factor out e to the x. x squared plus two x minus three. This is the same as e to the x times x plus three times x minus one. Set this equal to zero. We got two points, two values we want to check, negative three and positive one. So we just check to see what's going on on the intervals broken up at those points. So we got negative three, negative one. Check the points between them. So maybe let's look like negative two, zero, negative 10. And go from there. So let's got um. <laughs> Um, ne well, negative 10, put a negative 10 into here, e to the negative 10, negative 10 plus 3, negative 7, negative 10 minus 11, negative 11. So we have a negative times a negative times a positive, the so positive and positive, so we have a positive here. So, so and I should put like a concave up actually. Positive there. Let's now check negative two, plug it into here. E to the negative two. And let's, for, let, this is always gonna be positive. So you don't, we don't even have to really check anymore. And don't get thrown off and make, make them, don't make the silly mistake that this could be negative. It's always gonna be positive. So negative two into there will be positive one. Negative two into there, negative three. So we have positive times a negative, so we have a negative. Negative, so it's concave down here. And now we just check zero. E to the zero is one. So positive, zero plus three, three, zero minus one, negative one. So we just have a negative now. Oh, wait, hold on. I was like, what? This should be positive one. I may have messed up. I put positive one here. I want to see if anybody, I want to just see if anybody would catch on the comment section, but just kidding. So let's check, let's check positive 10. Plug 10, 10, 10 into there. E to the 10, 13, 10 minus 1, 9. So all positive, so all good. It's positive in here. So it's only concave down and here. So concave down on negative three to one. Uh, 
And there we go. So I hope that helps. Any questions, any feedback, leave me a comment or multiple comments or send me a message. Um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, again, I'm always open to feedback. If anything I can do to improve, that's my goal. Um, and of course, it would help it would make me feel a lot better if you, you know, gave me a like or made sure to subscribe and just let me know any other videos you want me to, you want me to focus on. But I'll be looking at the next response questions in the next video. So, so I'll see you then.